So while North Korea is accelerating its cooperation with Russia, U.S. President-elect Trump is returning to the office in January. Eyes are now on what's to come next. For more, we have our foreign affairs correspondent Pei Yunji here in the studio. Welcome, Yunji. Thanks for having me. So Kim Jong-un sent a message towards the United States for the first time since the November election. What might be the intention behind? Right, for, for more than a week, North Korea has remained relatively quiet about the U.S. presidential election and Trump's victory and return to the White House. But it broke its silence yesterday, and we saw Kim criticizing Washington, saying trilateral cooperation between South Korea, the U.S., and Japan is a critical factor that threatens peace on the Korean Peninsula. He also said the United States and the West have been staging the Ukraine war in order to expand the scope of Washington's military intervention into the world. Yet he has yet to publicly acknowledge that he has been providing troops to Russia or mention Trump's political comeback. Experts say that the strategic intention behind this is to justify his military support to Russia while trying to gain the upper hand in arms control negotiations after Trump's second term administration kicks off next year. Kim Jong-un did not directly mention troop deployments, but by criticizing the West regarding the Ukraine war, I think North Korea is indirectly trying to justify its actions. And some analysts say that Kim's message is to build cohesion within the military and solidify his role as the regime's leader amid their troop deployments to Russia and the presidential transition in the United States. And Trump has already named a list of people who will serve in his cabinet. How is the new administration expected to handle North Korea issues? So the two key words that describe Trump's picks to the new administration are loyalists and hardliners. Trump is set to appoint those who are known to take a hardline approach to foreign affairs as he prepares to push forward with his America First foreign policy. First of all, he selected Mike Waltz as the White House National Security Advisor. Waltz is a Florida Republican and a Trump loyalist who's considered a foreign policy hawk towards China and Iran. And as for Secretary of State, he's expected to name Senator Marco Rubio, which will make him the first person of Latin descent to serve as America's top diplomat. Diplomat. Rubio has in past years advocated for a muscular foreign policy towards America's geopolitical foes, including China, Iran, and Cuba. Analysts say that Trump is not expected to put huge pressure on North Korea throughout his second term in office. The new Trump administration will keep its current level of denuclearization and deterrence efforts. But I don't think it will try to engage in nuclear negotiations with North Korea or change the North's policy by pressuring the regime. Will Trump and Kim meet again? Possibly, but it seems highly unlikely for now. So Trump and Kim met three times during Trump's first term, but, failed, but Trump failed to persuade Kim to give up his nuclear weapons. They first met in Singapore then in Hanoi, and finally in the demilitarized zone between the two Koreas. But the talks ended without any breakthroughs. During his campaign, Trump said getting along with Kim Jong-un is a good thing and that Kim misses him. But experts that I've talked to have said Kim doesn't have much to gain from meeting Trump because he needs something more than a good photo op, and it won't be easy to reach an agreement on nuclear issues. South Korea's unification minister also said this week that it won't be easy for the two leaders to meet again as the geopolitical situation has changed since Trump's first term and because the North has advanced its nuclear and missile capabilities over the past several years. As the United States and the international community are calling for a complete denuclearization of North Korea, he said it's highly unlikely that Washington will recognize North Korea as a nuclear state and engage in nuclear disarmament talks. But given Trump's unpredictability, we cannot rule out the possibility of diplomacy re resuming between them. So we'll have to see how that unfolds. We'll have to see. All right. Thanks, Jinji. Thank you.